Then it goes into the sea where it starts killing fish and causes a dead zone. So it doesn't appear by magic there. It's not just the loss of fish. It's the sickness before that. My name is Richard Demania. I'm the chief economist of sustainable development in the World Bank. Scientists refer to water as being the bloodstream of the biosphere. Water is essential for the environment, it's, it's, it's essential for life, and it is really the lifeblood too of the economy. You run out of water, there's nothing you can do. Unfortunately, there's far too many sources of pollution and contamination into water. One, of course, is sewage that we're all familiar with. The other is just waste that runs off from cities and elsewhere. We can think about the impacts of water pollution as cascading through both the economy and the environment. Let's take the example, say, of nitrogen. You can start off with nitrogen in untreated sewage or on the farm. From there, the nitrogen goes into a river. From the river, of course, it can form algal blooms. Algal blooms cause all sorts of health problems to humans. They kill fish. It can kill the water altogether. Then it ends up in the sea in very, very large quantities. And eventually it causes something called hypoxia. That simply means lack of oxygen. And that causes dead zones. Dead zones, why? Because nothing can live without oxygen. You take out the oxygen from the water through the success of pollution, and what you've got is a complete dead zone where fish can't exist. It's hazardous for anything that actually touches it. So the problem is not getting any better. It's actually getting a lot worse. And of course, everything in the environment is connected, so it feeds right back through. It's a problem that countries rich and poor alike have to systematically address because it impacts health. When it impacts health, it spills over directly into the economy. If you are sick, you do not go to work. You have to spend your precious dollars and your money on getting better, on medicines. Very often you can get lethally contaminated water and it's clear, it doesn't smell, it doesn't look any different from clean water that would be safe to drink. That's why it's quite an insidious problem. There's one statistic which says every year there's at least a thousand new chemicals, synthetic chemicals, that get put into water. And that's why it's a problem where you need good regulation, good policy, and good water treatment. So the first way to address the problem, and the most critical way, is to make people aware, very aware, and truthfully aware based on very good science of what is actually happening and what the quality of water is. There are solutions to the wastewater problem. We can start off by cost-effective things, things like using wetlands, nature-based solutions. And then if the contaminants are too great or the scale is, doesn't work, we can move on to wastewater treatment plants. That would be ideal to combine the two, what's called a hybrid solution. We can think, too, of making good use of that water if we clean it sufficiently so that we can use that water, say, for farming or for other purposes, rather than saying out of sight, out of mind, which happens, some say, for 70% of wastewater, is just pushed into the sea, semi-untreated or inadequately treated. When we address the water pollution problem, we do see a boost in economic activity, and we see more jobs, we see more fluidity in the economy, and we see things going the right way. So there is no reason whatsoever to have children and people falling sick from wastewater contamination, from the destruction of our oceans and our rivers and our lakes, when we have solutions that could solve the problem, help the economy, help the environment, and help people's health. So you would have a healthier and a wealthier world to live in.